I have a hard time seeing fewer than 10 wins on Virginia Tech's schedule this year. That's Kenton Gibbs, Locked On ACC, joining me here on the show to predict what could be a resurgent breakout season for the Hokies this year. Their, their win total, according to our friends at FanDuel, is 8.5. And, and Kenton, I think that's a reflection of two things. You have a third-year head coach who has shown an upward trajectory in his first two seasons. You have a returning quarterback who has to improve as a passer, but is a dynamic guy on the ground. You were one of the leaders in the country in returning production from a decent team a year ago. And holy smokes, Kenton, I don't know if outside of Syracuse, there is a schedule more favorable than the one the Hokies have. Well, a favorable schedule, and I want to get to that first because I've talked at Nazem about how special I think Chiron Drones is. People give Cam Ward the preseason player of the year. Everybody projects him to be the best quarterback in ACC. He has a ceiling that I think is unrivaled in the conference in terms of just necking the, who's who's the best. If they all play their best ball, Cam Ward's higher than anybody else. The only other guy that I see in that same realm, especially as a dual threat, is Kyron Drone. So I've, I've sung his praises a million times over. But when you talk about that schedule, I asked you before we got on air, what is their toughest game outside of Blacksburg? And the best you could come up with was, well, maybe Miami, maybe Syracuse. That's that's a sign, generally, that you're in good territory, unless those two teams are both just elite level. With Syracuse, they're one of the bigger wild cards in the conference. Everybody believes in Fran Brown. He's done a hell of a job recruiting the portal. But they're not a proven commodity that you can firmly say, I believe the Orange will be good to great this year. They're not in that territory whatsoever. So you look at the schedule, you look at Chiron, you look at the production they're bringing back, and look at some of the additions. One of the things that I talk about a lot is one of their Achilles heels last year with their ability to stop the run. They bring in third-team all-ACC defensive tackle Aeneas Peoples. He's familiar to the ACC. He's just not in Durham anymore, and he's going to make that trip back. But him and that crew stopping the run is going to be vital to their success because we all know about Virginia Tech defensive back. I mean, at first I thought it was just if your last name was Fuller, you would be able to put on that uniform and lock down everybody that came your way. But apparently it's just something about that burgundy. But in all seriousness, that team is primed to have a much better year than many people are giving them credit for. A schedule that is, again, when you talk about your home game, your toughest games are all at home outside of Miami. You've got Clemson, but you've got them at home. You've got Georgia Tech, who could be a trap game, but you've got them at home. You've got every single team at home. And even if you want to throw Virginia in there and say it's a rivalry, you never know what could happen, guess where you got them? At home. So this is a Virginia Tech team that this year will be about how mature are they? How well are they ready and prepared to be a team that has expectations upon them, that people look at them and say, man, how good are they? How good can they be? Because the only early season test I see, the only one, is Rutgers, but guess where that's at? At home. At home. And that that's what I keep coming back to is, you know, I'm going through and I'm saying, all right, win, win, win. Okay, at Miami, that's a loss. My, Miami has one of the two or three best rosters, maybe the, the best roster in, in the entire ACC. I love the Cam Ward edition with Damian Martinez and the receivers they've got, the offensive line. I'm, I'm very high on Miami. I think they're a 10 and 2 or 11 and 1 team, but. Virginia Tech could be that too. And I, I had a question from someone here on the show recently, Kenton, about teams that start the season unranked because this is a trend that happens every year in college football that could wind up in the top 10 by the end of the year. Virginia Tech is near the top of that list for me because of how mm -hmm. the schedule breaks in their favor because Clemson is a game that I think they're going to get up for and win. I'm just apprehensive about predicting them to go 11 and one, I want to find a second loss in there because though Brent Pry has shown a lot of good things, the program has shown some encouraging signs. They haven't shown me enough to where I'm going to put my foot down and say, I'm predicting them 11 and one. I just have a tough, but I do have a tough time finding a second loss in here because there's going to be a stumble at home. The crowd's going to be great all year because they should start out with a handful of wins. You know the one that I, I wouldn't look past Kenton if I'm a Virginia Tech fan? I think you can get I think you can get by Vandy. No, I'm not no, I'm not gonna say Stanford. I'm not bringing my, my Pac twelve roots to, to, to the show here. Like you can't ever you're Pac twelve guy. I I know, I know. I look I've seen crazier things happen at the farm, but I think Virginia Tech has a better roster 
top to bottom there, it's the Rutgers game for me. Mm. It's, it's the Rutgers game because if you talk about teams with returning production, they're returning something like 14 starters. Greg Schiano's yeah. not some brand new head coach who's no. new to college football trying to acclimate himself even to that particular program. They were a good team last year. They were six and six. They won a bowl game. They return a bunch of starters. I wouldn't overlook that Rutgers game, but as you go down the list, Kenton, you, you make a great point that, yeah, Miami on the road, all right, you can probably chalk that one up as a loss, and that's fine. But then your, your season, getting 10 wins in the regular season, may come down to how you play Clemson at home, tough game, right. and Rutgers. And that's just so manageable from a scheduling standpoint. Absolutely. If you told me, Kenton, your team season will come down to two games and neither one will be against a team that you believe is the best 10, maybe 15 in the country. What do you think? I'd be happy with that. The only problem is I agree with you on Rutgers a lot. I agree with you on Rutgers a lot because Greg Schiano has an identity and that team has his identity. They are tough. They are physical. You say what you want about those boys from Piscataway. They will jack you up in the trenches and so i look at what what virginia tech has struggled with as of late and i say to myself i believe that pride will have them be tougher and more physical in the trenches am i sure of that i'm not gonna say that i believe that aeneas peoples was an excellent excellent addition to that defensive line do i believe he was enough to show up a defensive line that and this is a fact now they did not have a single starter on that defensive line that was 300 pounds plus with all due respect, you ain't gonna That's get away with small. that. That's a little small. That's a little small. You ain't gonna get away with that in the ACC. I'm sorry, player. Not around here. Not around here. You need big bodies. You need big, angry men that refuse to move and budge and can help you change the math in order to win some of these matchups. Because again, on the back end, if there is no greater example of the phrase "the front end will affect the back end" before the back end affects the front end, look at Virginia Tech. Once again, an amazing group of defensive backs led by Dorian Strong, who is a just a phenomenal athlete. And so you look at that group and you say, if we can get in a position where we can put more of those guys on the field, ooh, it'll be scary for you. But against Rutgers, they know how to just stay ahead of the chains. They're the masters of we don't run a triple option, but we will three yard in the cloud of dust you to death. You're going to keep looking up saying, did they just go for it on fourth and one? What did happen? Did they just – how did they just – it was just second and six. How did they get another first? They're the masters of that because, again, Greg Schiano takes a very professional – he takes a very NFL approach to coaching, and it's very much so that we don't need to get crazy with our scheme. We don't need to do anything wild. We need to have big, angry men moving there less big and most likely less angry than our guys' men. I think there's going to be a second loss in here. I, I legitimately don't feel strong enough about any of these games – to pick which one it is right now. But my my record prediction here for Virginia Tech is 10 and two. I think Blacksburg would be thrilled with that sort of the year. The schedule lines up really well. Between Rutgers, Georgia Tech, and allow me to sell you really quickly, they could certainly lose the Clemson game. But the reason they're gonna win the Clemson game is why I, I, I could get talked into them stumbling at Syracuse. You're on the road, number one. Number two, Syracuse does not have a horrific roster with the way Fran Brown has worked in the transfer portal. And number three, that Clemson game, that's got a big circle on it. You got a big, you got a big circle, the look ahead factor could come into play. I think Georgia Tech is solid. I think Rutgers is solid. I think Syracuse is okay, but you're on the road. Between one of those three, I think Virginia Tech can drop one. But I think they land 10-2 and two here, Kenton. I'm going to tell you this. If they lose to Syracuse, I'm guaranteeing you they lose to Clemson. If they overlook Syracuse, mm. look at Clemson, I'm guaranteeing you a loss. Of Clemson. Uh, that means, we'll see. We'll see. I don't, think, I don't think they've seen enough success to know how to bounce back and get up off the mat. I don't think they're there yet. I think they're still in that stage of the program where one loss turns into two, turns into three. I think that they're still in that moment where it's not going to go well for them if they do lose that game. So they better have the right countenance for it, or else you can go ahead and throw that Clemson game right out the book as well. What's your final record prediction for Virginia Tech? You know, the sports books have them at eight. I'm going to go with nine. I'm going to go with three. nine. Nine and three? Nine and three? That'd be just three, over. Yeah, I think nine and three is where they end up because I believe in this team. I think that they're a very good team. But there's also part of me that's I'm a little skittish. 
Only I know, all I know. The year. I'm Don't there too. I want I want Virginia Tech early in the year to give me a reason to jump on board the hype train. I I, right. I want that to happen. We'll just have to see if it does. Kenton Gibbs locked on ACC, locked on Wolfpack as well. Kenton, appreciate the time. Always happy to be here, brother.